Good afternoon, and welcome to St. George's, whether you're here in person or whether we're welcoming you online. It's good to have you with us. It's a lovely sunny day today, and um, I think people are happy to be out. We have a few more people today, which is quite lovely. Today we're going to be remembering somebody who's actually on the calendar for tomorrow, but her name is Hannah Greer Coombe, and I'll tell you a little bit more about her in a few minutes. But in the meantime, let's take a moment to be still and aware of God's presence in and all around us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In this time and place, we gather on the ancestral and unceded lands of the Anishinaabe and the Haudenosaunee peoples. Let us pray together. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for Hannah. Eternal God, you clothed your servant Hannah with the habit of prayer and the robe of wisdom to guide her sisters in this nation in the ways of holiness and the works of mercy and love. Deliver us, we pray, from an inordinate love of this world that we may be freed for the worship of your name and for deeds that reveal your grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. And Jesus said, Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road is easy that leads to destruction, and there are many who take it. For the gate is narrow and the road is hard that leads to life, and there are few who find it. It's a very short passage, I'm going to say it again. <laughs> Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide, and the road is easy that leads to destruction, and there are many who take it. For the gate is narrow, and the road is hard, that leads to life, and there are few who find it. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise be to you, thee, O Christ. Please be seated. I think I'm going to read to you what Reverend Dr. Stephen Reynolds has to say in For All the Saints about Hannah before I talk to you about my thoughts. The Sisterhood of St. John the Divine is an order of Anglican nuns founded in Canada in 1884 and dedicated, as its rule states, to personal sanctification and active charity. Today, we remember Hannah Greer Coombe, who was its founder and first Mother Superior. Born in Ontario, she married an Englishman and spent most of her married life in Britain. In 1877, her husband's business sent him to Chicago, where he died of cancer the following year. Mrs. Coombe remained in Chicago for another three years and then decided to return to England and try her vocation as an Anglican nun. On her way back, she visited her family in Toronto and discovered a group of Anglicans who wished to found a Canadian sisterhood. 
she accepted their invitation to take the first step and performed her novitiate in the United States. Mother Hannah returned to Toronto in September 1884 and launched the Sisterhood of St. John the Divine. She and her new community initially faced a good deal of harassment, but their work during the Riel Rebellion, serving in the government's field hospitals, overcame these prejudices. The sisters eventually founded a hospital of their own where over half their patients received medical attention free of charge. Later, they established a nursing home for the elderly, one of the first in Canada, and also took charge of a school for girls. Mother Hannah guided these enterprises and the everyday life of the sisters with holiness, practical wisdom, and a sense of humor that pierced high-flying pretensions and unseasonable gloom. She retired from the office of Superior in 1916 and died on Ash Wednesday five years later. In her life, she learned to be a light which kindled righteous deeds in others and her community continues in the same work to this day. Some of you indeed may have visited the convent of St. John the Divine. It's in North Toronto, in North York. And the sisters there are still busy doing ministry. They still have a hospital up there called St. John's Rehab Hospital, which is now part of the Sunnybrook system. But they're still involved in the management and they still do a lot of the pastoral and um, spiritual care within that hospital. But they also play a big role in the Diocese of Toronto. I know Bishop George could tell us all about that because the sisters from St. John's have uh, opened that convent to so many clergy and so many people who are trying to find their way in life um, and offer really good retreat facilities and, and wisdom that you don't find in a lot of places. So we're still very grateful for their ability to do that. And it, it, I would, I'm very surprised by the numbers that they still seem to attract. They've still got a, a good number of sisters up there and they're not all really ancient, which is what's happening in most of the orders these days, which is also a very good thing. But I can't think about the sisterhood of St. John the Divine without also thinking of Call the Midwife. I don't know how many of you watch Call the Midwife, but I certainly like watching Call the Midwife. It's, it's quite a remarkable um, series and, and it's continuing, which is really very wonderful for me. Um, and I think about Hannah and I think about the two principal sisters in Call the Midwife that we meet. We meet Sister Julianne all the time, of course, because she's in charge of the, of the, of the midwifery and the, and the home that they provide there. But we ought to occasionally meet the Mother Superior who pops in and throws her weight around for a while and then disappears. But in both those cases, the women are incredibly compassionate and they're both very capable of learning from their mistakes and from the culture that they find themselves in. They've both come from a very middle-class background. And here they are working in Poplar, which is the east end of London, where the docks are in incredible poverty. And they begin to see the pressures, especially on the women in that society, because they're offering midwifery. But they begin to see the pressures of poverty that they've never experienced in their own lives. And it changes their views on a number of things, including a number of churchy things. And that's exactly what I imagine happened to Hannah. I mean, I haven't, I never met her, and I haven't consulted the sisters at St. John the Divine today, but, you know, if she started out in a, probably a, quite a middle-class world, she was married, she went off to England, probably fairly glamorous, and then back to Chicago, and then bang, her husband dies. And she's going back through Toronto to visit her family, and there's great pressure on her to come and start an order. There's a great need for it. This is, we're talking the 1880s. Think about you know, Charles Dickens and, and, and all of that poverty that existed and the pressures of living in that society. And very, very few government-run institutions of any quality at all. And there she is, beginning a very different life. It must have taken great courage, and I hope a lot of support from clergy and friends, 
and a lot of harassment because Anglicans weren't supposed to have nuns. I mean, you didn't do that kind of thing. That was a Roman Catholic popish thing, and you didn't definitely want any nuns in, in the Anglican church. But here she was, starting something that was quite revolutionary for, for this country at the time, and, and had just begun in England too. And when you, t when you do the research about Cruel the Midwife, the sisters at St. Na at Nonata's house, St. Saint Nonata's house in Cruel the Midwife, are actually sisters of St. John the Divine which was also an order in England. So we have a St. John the Divine here, and I think they've related themselves quite closely, but they didn't start together. And so I think about Emily and I, uh, Hannah, and I think, about, I think about the struggles that she must have had and her sisters working in those regimental hospitals, a bit like Florence Nightingale, you know, in the Crimea, uh, out in Manitoba because of the Riel Rebellion and having a lot of, of opposition, but hanging in there and finding their way through it all and eventually becoming very valuable to the community. And then I thought about the gospel, which was very short, which is why I read it twice. And the gospel talks about the road, well, the narrow gate. And when I read that piece, I always think about Robert Frost's poem, you know, the one that says, two roads converged in a wood, and I took the road less traveled, and that has made all the difference. And I think Jesus is talking about that kind of road that's less well-traveled, much harder to get into that lifestyle. And he's asking us to be like Hannah and to learn the needs of our society and to enter into the pain of our society as he did and as she did, and to take that road less traveled and I think we have done that to some degree at St. George's certainly because I listened to the breakfast program stuff on Sunday and I thought we are working along that road that's less traveled and we've started through that narrow gate but it wasn't always the case for churches and I hope that we we finally are beginning to learn our lesson so thank you to the sisters of John the Divine for reminding us amen Tom's going to lead us through some prayers now. Thank you, Tom. The response of our prayers is, Lord, have mercy. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For peace from on high and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. For our bishops and for all our clergy and people, we pray for the Diocese of Pelotas, Igreja Episcal Angelica de Brazil, and the clergy and people of this diocese. In the Niagara Diocese, St. John Nagazawea, Campbellville, the clergy and people of this parish. We pray for our primate, Archbishop Linda, our Metropolitan, Archbishop Anne, and our Bishop of Niagara, Susan. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For Charles, our King, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For this city of St. Catherine and region of Niagara, for every city and community, and for those who live in them in faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. 
for good weather and for abundant harvest for all to share. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those who travel by land, water, or air, for the sick and the suffering, especially today we remember those in Turkey and Syria who have been affected by the earthquake, and also today a tragic situation where children and staff in a daycare were hit by a bus in Laval, Quebec. We also pray for Carolee, Ken, Kevin, Rick M, Kelly, William W, Jack and Joyce, Anne, Maureen, Bishop Walter and family, Fred, Karen, Betty, Maureen A, Vicki, Joan, Terry, and Sarah Lee. We also pray for the following families, the Marks, Martin, Mahood, Mayberry, and McCaffrey families. For prisoners and captives and for their safety, health, and salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have died, again, we remember those who have perished in the dreadful earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. Also, uh, we pray for the flowers are on the main altar are given to the glory of God in loving memory of Henry, Katie, and Elizabeth Fisher and Bill Trelford, given by their family. We also pray for Nancy Court, beloved member of our congregation who died this week. Thank you for her generosity, faithfulness, insight, and wisdom. Give her loved ones strength and peace and welcome her into your eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Remembering St. George, St. Catherine, and all the saints, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our God. To thee, to thee o, Lord. o Lord. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time, with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt hear the requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth and in the world to come life everlasting. For thou, Father, art good and loving. And we glorify thee through thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
Let us pray. O Lord, our God, who taught your servant Hannah to rule her life by the law of your grace, grant us so to trust in your word that our hands may be lifted in thanks to receive the salvation which you promise. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things, who has gathered us together in this Eucharistic feast that we may be renewed in love, joy, and peace. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee, and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, who didst make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit to bless and to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. We praise thee, we bless thee, we thank thee, and we pray to thee, Lord our God. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this Holy Communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose poverty is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. This is the table at which God is host, and all are welcome guests. And these are the gifts of God for the whole people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. 
Merciful God, teach us to find an example in your servant, Hannah, that we may set our hearts on the knowledge of your Son, our Saviour, and inherit the riches laid upon us, up, riches that laid up for us in him, who is Lord of all creation. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. And the peace of Christ be with you all. Amen. Amen. Peace, everybody. <laughs> it's lovely to see some more faces today. Thank you for being here. <clears throat>